वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज डॉक्टर नीरज अग्रवाल एंड आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन यूनिवर्सिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ होटल एंड टूरिज्म मैनेजमेंट पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी चंडीगढ़ आई एम प्रजेंटिंग लेक्चर ऑन मॉड्यूल टाइटल्ड ब्रेड फैब्रिकेशन अंडर द पेपर टाइटल्ड फूड प्रोडक्शन ऑपरेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट after going through this module the students will be able to understand the functions of in each ingredient in bread making able to know the steps and methods of bread making know about the bread fruits and the process of bread making now i will first discuss with the introduction wheat is the source of many food items of which bread is the most common bread is manufactured in almost every country of the world bread which is table food is prepared by baking at the right and proportion mixture of flour and water and sometimes certain ingredients bread is one of the oldest prepared foods dating back many centuries The first bread produced was probably a cooked version of grain paste made from ground or real grains and water. There are no concrete records that explain how bread was made and we can only speculate that it may have been developed by accidental cooking or by experimenting with water and grain flour. The development of leavened bread two is probably prehistoric yeast spores are cereal grains so any dough left to rest becomes naturally leavened the earliest archaeological evidence of yeast is from ancient egypt good quality bread can be produced by using good quality raw materials ensuring a balanced for make of recipe and following the right procedure the bread making each ingredient has its specification and function in the manufacturing process it is very important to know and understand the properties specifications and functions of these ingredients without understanding this key aspect it would be become very difficult to achieve the right quality of bread apart from the ingredients certain additives are also used to improve the quality and nutritional value of bread there are many varieties of bread available in the market of these white bread is the most common variety other meal breads milk bread dalia bread oat bread soya bread fruit bread etc a unique characteristic variations is shape and sizes are made for example dinner rolls plated breads buns etc once we understand the basic bread making procedure it is very easy to wrap variations in product during manufacturing now we'll discuss with the functions of ingredients used bread is composed of various ingredients each playing a particular role and contributing to the flavor and texture of the finished product to be familiar and understand these ingredients is the first step in good bread making the first step is flour generally refined flour is used to make bread it contains enough gluten to make the framework for the loaf bread flour which contains stronger gluten makes excellent bread whole wheat flour can also be used to make certain kinds of bread second ingredient is sugar sugar furnishes food for the yeast and it aids in browning the loaf granulated sugar is most commonly used though other sweeteners like honey molasses corn syrup or brown sugar as well as raisins and dates can be used they all add a different variety of flavor texture and color to the bread the third ingredient is salt which improves the flavor and texture it controls ease action so that the dough does not rise too quickly too much salt slows down the rising thus salt when used should be in balance with the flour or results could be disastrous 
yeast, it is the leavening agent in the bread. When the tiny yeast plants feed on sugar, they produce carbon dioxide gas which makes the dough rise. Yeast may be obtained in two forms, compressed and granular. The compressed cakes are moist and must be kept under refrigeration or frozen. Granular yeast will keep longer in stored in the refrigerator. Fat Fat used in bread may be lard or hydrogenated fat, butter, margarine or cooking oil. The fat used in bread increases tenderness and volume, improves texture, flavor and keeping quality. It also contributes to the golden brown color of the crust. Liquid Liquid used in bread may be milk or water. Different forms of mild such as fluid mild, buttermilk, evaporated milk or dry milk may be used. Milk in any form increases the food value of the bread and improves its keeping quality. Bread made with water has a nuffy flair and a crisper crust than the bread made with milk. Water in which potatoes are cooked may also be used. Eggs Eggs too are an optional ingredient in bread making. They provide richness, flavor and improves texture. Breads also have a longer shelf life in egg are added to the dough. Eggs are best used in the production of sweet and rich doughs. Other ingredients which are used are spices, dry fruits, nuts and various seeds and cereals are also used in bread dough. They contribute to the flavor, texture and nutritional value of the bread. Now, bread improvers. Bread improvers escalate the process of dough development and enhances the volume and texture of bread. Chemical bread improvers include ascorbic acid, potassium bromated, ammonium chloride, various phosphates, amylase and protease. Salt is one of the most common additives used in production of bread. Bread improvers are very important in large scale bread production. Bread improvers are also known as yeast improvers, yeast foods, dough enhancers, dough conditioners or bread enhancers. Now I will discuss about the bread improvers and their functions. It aids in production of carbon dioxide during fermentation. It aids in refraining the gas by strengthening the gluten which forms the cell structure of the bread. The following natural ingredients also perform the role of bread improvers. Milk, it is an emulsion and aids in dissolving and mixing other ingredients. Milk has tenderizing properties as well as tightening action on flour protein. Lactose in milk regulates the color of the crust and improves its flavor. Egg, it aids in gluten development and adds nutrients to bread dough. It enhances flavor and is a leavening agent and provides the bread with a tender and light texture. Malt, diastolic malt constitutes enzymes that disintegrate starch into sugar. Malt aids the dough rise and enhance the quality of the bread crust. Soya flour, it adds protein and softens the texture of the bread. Soya lecithin is an emulsifying agent that allows oil and water to mix. In addition to these, other bread improvers that enhances the quality of bread includes the following. Emulsifiers, Sodium steroid lactylate performs the function of an emulsifying as well as dough strength ever. Monoglycerides aids in reducing the fat contents in dough. GMS strengthens the flour and improves the texture of bread. Dough conditioners Sodium chloride or salt improves the texture of the bread loaf and strengthen the dough. Other dough conditioners include sodium, steroids, lactylate, calcium dioxide, calcium iodate, potassium iodate, ammonium sulfate, potassium persulfate, analyzes, etc. Now preservatives, these include calcium propionates which inhibits a bread spectrum 
of mold and rope bacteria. Flow work to limit its inhibitory effect, bakers add to the dough at the mixing stage. Now, I will discuss the steps in bread making. Scale fluid milk. Milk even though pasteurized needs to be scaled. The bacteria left in the milk will grow during the rising of the dough and may cause an off flavor in the bread. The best scalding temperature for milk is 85 degrees centigrade to 90 degrees centigrade. Scalding the milk is this temperature ranges kills all the bacteria and the loaf will have a better volume and the texture if the milk was scalded at a lower temperature. Then addition of yeast. Yeast consists of tiny plants which are killed by liquid that is too warm. Therefore, add the softened yeast only when the milk mixture is at 35 degrees centigrade or lower. If you have no thermometer, put a drop on the inside of your wrist. If this feels neither warm or cold, it is like warm. Then the rest period. After littling the dough, rest for about before kneading. The dough tightens and requires less flour. Before shaping the dough into loaves or rolls, allow it to rest another 10 minutes for easier handling. Then we go for kneading. Thorough kneading mixes the flour and other ingredients. It develops the gluten which helps to hold in the gas formed by the yeast. Then rising period. The rising period may determine the quality of the bread. Allow the dough to rise between 224 degrees centigrade to 29.4 degrees centigrade. The ATA temperature lower than 24 degrees centigrade rising would be prolonged at a temperature above 29.4 degrees centigrade and off flavor may develop. Good bread can be made when you allow the dough to rise only once before it is shaped. A finer texture bread may result with a second rising. Baking temperature. Baking sets the gluten and stops the gas formation. The best temperature for baking bread is a metal pan is 205 degrees centigrade. More thiamine vitamin B1 is preserved at this temperature than at temperature above or below 205 degrees centigrade. Bread is done when it shrinks from the pan or sounds hollow when you tap the top of the loaf with your fingers. Remove it from the pan immediately. To prevent steaming of the crust, place the loaf on a cooking rack or across the top of a pan so that air can circulate around it. Storage of bread. Allow the bread to cool thoroughly. They place it is a clan well aired covered container. Now I will discuss about a different methods of bread making. The first one is straight dough method. In this all ingredients are mixed together and dough is fermented for predetermined time that is 30 minutes. Fermentation time of straight dough depends on strength of flour. Strong flours requires more fermentation time to mature. Flours which requires 2 to 3 hours for maturing should be used for making bread by straight dough method. Flours that take very long period for maturing should not be used for straight method because during prolonged fermentation it is very difficult to control temperature of dough and rise in temperature will cause acid taste and flavor in bread. As temperature rises it has immediate effect on fermentation and speed so it is very necessary to control temperature and it can be done by using shorter fermentation period, adjusting temperature of dough by fermenting dough at optimum temperature. The second method is salt delay method. This is a slight variation of straight method where all ingredients are mixed except salt and fat. It has controlling effect on enzymatic action of yeast. Speed of fermentation of saltless dough will be faster. A reduction in total fermentation time could be effected. 
salt is added at knockback stage, the method of adding salt at later stage may be according to the convenience of individual baker. It may be sifted, dry in dough and mixed. It may be creamed with fat and mixed. This method is especially suitable if strong flour is to be used for bread making due to the absence of salt. Fermentation period is enhanced. Gluten is matured in a reasonably shorter time. And then third, no time dough method. In this, dough is not fermented in usual manner. It has just allowed a brief period of 30 minutes for it to recover from strains of mixing. Since dough is not fermented, the twin functions of fermentation that is production of gas and conditioning of gluten are achieved to sauce extent by increasing the quantity of yeast that is two to three times of original quantity and by making dough little slacker and warmer. Although it is possible to make very fairly acceptable bread during emergency by using this method. This has a poor keeping quality and lack or aroma due to abrasion of fermentation, the gluten and starch are not conditioned to retain the moisture and there is no flavor because flavor produced by products of fermentation are absent. As there is an increased quantity of yeast present, the bread may have a strong yeast flavor. The fourth method is sponge and dough method. A sponge dough is indicated as 65 to 70 sponge dough or 70 to 30 sponge dough where the first number that is 60 or 70 indicates the percentage of flour used in and the second number is 40 or 30 indicates the percentage of flour mixed at the time of dough making. In this method as the first step a part of flour proportional amount of water all the formula yeast and yeast food are mixed together Longer fermenting sponges may certain some amount of salt also. Mixing operation is carried out just sufficiently to incorporate all ingredients evenly. This sponge is fermented for a predetermined time. Sponge fermentation depends on the amount flour in sponge and flour quantity. The quantity of flour in sponge depends on the strength of flour. If flour is too strong, more quantity should be used in sponge and in turn, sponge should be fermented for longer duration. It is advisable to test sponge physically for its readiness before mixing it into dough. When sponge is ready, it should be broken down properly with formula water so that it even mixing in dough is assured. Uneven mixing of sponge in dough should be avoided as it produces uneven results in bread. After the dough is mixed, it is rested for 30 to 45 minutes, during which time it relaxes from the stress of mixing operations. During this process or period, and the dough is in perfect state for further manipulation, that is cutting, molding, etc. Now, I will discuss about bread falls and their causes. The first bread causes poorly shaped loaf and it is because of inexperienced handling, too much flour or not enough flour, dough too tight before baking, oven not hot enough or uneven heat. Second is coarse grain in which it can be because of dough not needed enough, too much rising before baking, oven temperature too low. The third effect is streaks. Dough allowed to dry on top during rising period. Dough not needed enough. Dry flour folded into loaves during shaping. Dough too heavily greased on top during rising. Another fault can be crumbly. The bread can be very crumbly. It is because of too much flour not enough kneading, too much rising before baking. Another fault can be crust splitting on top or sides. It is because of oven too hot 
or uneven heat in oven loaves placed too close together during baking another fault can be soggy or heavy and it is because of too much flour insufficient rising or baking poor yeast or poor flour the another bread fault is off flavor and it is because of the use of old yeast too long rising of dough too hot temperature during rising too slow or incomplete breaking insufficient scalding of milk now i will discuss about bread diseases there are two diseases which affect bread are rope and mold the origin and remedies of rope the bacteria responsible for causing rope are known as bacillus mesenteriensis vulgaris this is a soil borne bacteria since the crease and beard of wheat contains some amount of dust these are generally the areas that harbor bacteria where it gets transferred to the flour when bread is slightly infected it develops a sickening sweet rotting fruit type of smell the crumb becomes discolored and sticky the growth of rope can be kept in check by adding acetic added acid of 10% strength to the flour calcium propionate can also be used the bakery should be spotlessly clean with no accumulation of dust all the equipments utensils etc should be kept clean and the area should be well ventilated the second disease is mold spores of mold are always present in the atmosphere and they go when they find suitable conditions if warmth and moisture spores enters through the cracks on the surface of the bread and penetrate inside spoiling the crumb bread is normally infected by three types of mold one is white that is mycure mycodo greenish or bluish pencilium or aspergillum black aspergillus nigger to keep mold growth in check the baker should maintain proper hygienic conditions at all times now i am going to discuss about different equipments used in bread making many large and small types of equipments are used in the production of bread it starts from sieving the flour to mixing in dough machines and proving and baking the first one is seam drum sieve is mostly used to sieve the flour and the size of the mash through which it will be sieved will depend upon the type of flour being used industrial flour tiffers are also used in many hotels which produce breads on large scale weighing scale digital weighing and is used for the accuracy of ingredient so especially in the cakes of recipe of cakes baking trays known as sheet pans these can be of iron or teflon coated for non stick bread molds these are containers of various types and sizes these are often sold by the volume they are intended for proving cabinets electric gas and pressure steam models of proving cabinets are available in a proving cabinet water is heated with an element it maintains the temperature of 25 degree centigrade and humidity of 90% retarder prover retarder prover is an equipment that controls the rate of proving for the bread to be made the baker can shape the bread in the evening while the baking can be done at a later stage that is as and when required a retarder prover automatically adjusted so that breads are ready to be baked at programmed timing dough mixers various kinds of dough mixers are used to knead the dough spiral dough mixers are used in which the dough hook and the bowl both move in opposite directions so that the dough is automatically scraped while making the dough they are also tuned to two speeds slow and high as most of the bread recipes 
call for mixing dough at particular speed for the optimum development of gluten. Then dough divider. Equipment used for dividing the dough into equal sizes and portions. It is also used for shaping them into round balls. It is mostly used in large establishments. Ovens. Baking oven with steam attachment for better baking. Dough scores. A piece of equipment having a sharp surgical blade in the end to score the breads at an angle before baking. Dough scrapers. Available in plastic or steel, they are used to scrap the doughs and also to cut the dough for scaling. Wooden tabletop. Traditionally, maple wood is used as it is known porous and very hygienic. The wooden tabletop allows the bread dough to be at required temperature as wood is bad conductor of heat and hence does not take or give heat to the dough and also the dough rarely sticks to the wooden surfaces. However, because of its non-availability and expenses, people also use granite or marble tabletops. Metal is not preferred as it can react with the dough and can discolor it. Branch brush, a large hard brittle brush to clean the tabletop and to brush away excess flour. Stray bottle, used for spraying water onto the bread if the ovens are not equipped with steaming action. Now, I will summarize this module. Many different types of bread formulations have been developed so far. These formulations are developed in different regions based on the traditional food habits of the people. The recipe for bread making includes wheat flour, yeast, salt and water. If any one of these basic ingredients is missing, the acceptable product cannot be prepared. Other ingredients are known as optional, for example, fat, sugar, milk and milk products, malt and malt products, oxidants such as ascorbic acid and potassium bromate. Surfactants and antimicrobial agents, each of these ingredients has specific role to play in bread making. Critical steps of bread making processes are mixing, fermentation and baking. Thanking you and have a nice day.